Hey everyone, welcome back to another FSD Beta 10.12.2 video. Much like the previous version 10.11.2, I wanted to make a video around improvements I'd like to see in the next version of FSD, as well as improvements I'd like to see in general for the future. I've put together some clips that represent what I'm talking about and discuss them throughout the video. As always, if you enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe. Now let's get into it. All right, let's talk about speed bumps. This is something that I talked a lot about in 10.11.2. It's definitely improved in 10.12.2, but essentially what happened in, I think, 10.9 or 10.10, .10, they released a visualization for speed bumps. So prior builds, there was a little bit of recognition of speed bumps, but it really was was minimal. And in 10.9 or 10.10, .10, they, they improved that. One of the downsides of that is it was causing a lot of false slowdowns. And this is something I've hypothesized for the last few months, but it's part of the reason why I think they actually reduced the threshold for speed bumps and why they removed the visualization entirely is because they're still working on improving this. And so in 10.12.2, it's definitely improved, but there are a lot of cases, especially when there's shadows from trees or anything where 10.12.2 will miss the speed bumps and I need to disengage, which is totally fine. They'll improve it. And it's definitely better than 10.11.2, but something that I'd like to see improved in the future because it's a common disengagement for me in most of my drives. So let's talk about acceleration. 10.12.2 has some of the quickest acceleration out of any of the builds that I've seen thus far. And it's especially evident when coming out of turns, either at stop signs or red lights uh, or just making right turns in general, it will fly out of them, which is good in some cases, but in a lot of a lot of cases, it's actually uh, a little bit dangerous. It's just hard as a driver to like see quickly and, and the faster you go coming out of a turn, you know, the less time you have to see what's going on. But in particular, I'm finding that there's too much acceleration around turns. So one thing you'll notice if you look at the visualization is it can actually predict turns and it knows that it's going to go around, you know, you know, pretty tight curves. And so when it knows that it should slow down, it should stop accelerating but a lot of times i'm finding around where i live it will accelerate into turns and then halfway through the turn realize it's going way too fast and then hit the brakes and it's just not the best passenger experience and something i'm sure they'll improve but that's one of the pieces i really would like to see improved for 10.13 so similar to acceleration around turns and coming out of turns 10.12.2 is significantly better at decision making in general however a lot of the decisions it makes can be done a little too late they, they happen a little later than you would want them to and so what that basically means is the car isn't looking far enough into the distance to see what's happening and make a decision before it gets there. So this would effectively uh, reduce the amount of hard braking there is, so it'll be much smoother. So when you're coming up to tricky situations, it, it doesn't you know slam on the brakes, it'll slowly decelerate, kind of analyze the situation and then uh, move forward. So really it's, it's just about the car not freaking out when something happens. Obviously there is a time and a place for the car to slam on the brakes. If a pedestrian comes jumping out into the street or a, a biker does something weird, a car tries to hit you, like there's, there's tons of reasons why you'd want to slam on the brakes. But for the most part, like 99% of the time or, or more, you really don't need to. And so FSD, you know, it'll get better. It'll understand the world more and, and when it should use brakes and when it should just slowly decelerate. But it's something I would really like to see improved for 10.3. And, and future builds. It's obviously not going to be fixed in 10.13. I think this is something that they'll be working with until they come up with a general release and, and have, you know, L3, L4 autonomy, but something that I'm sure they're working on and, and will get better with time. All right, one of my biggest qualms, and it's highly relevant around where I drive frequently, is the car doesn't do a great job of accelerating into hills and when i say accelerating i really mean decelerating imagine you're coming you're taking a left and you're about to go up a hill if you go too fast you're going to hit your front bumper on the road which is obviously not what you want to do and fsd doesn't do a great job of i don't think it does a job at all of reading hills and understanding how quickly you should accelerate into them and that's something that will hopefully be improved probably not in 10.13 but maybe we'll start seeing some of that I don't think it's really anything they're even taking into consideration right now, but it's something I disengage for every time. So hopefully they are getting some data on that. But, you know, there's more flat space that people are driving. This is kind of an edge case. Uh, it might be something they, they don't get to for a while. But it's something that I'd really like them to, to improve and work on, um, especially around like visualizing hills and, and height differences and more verticality in the FSD visualization. Uh, just to give the, the passenger and the driver 
more confidence that the car understands and sees kind of the world around it. And so being able to have that height difference within FSD visualization would be super, super nice. Probably not something, again, they get to in 10.13, but hopefully in the future, before wide release, this is something that they start testing and, and working on. One of the most annoying things about 10.12.2 is false forward collision warnings. Okay, no one's crossing, that's good. Car didn't even slow down. I've been noticing that with pedestrians, it will forward collision warning uh, far more fre frequently uh, than previous builds when, when pedestrians are in the road. This is something that's gotten better, I think, over the last few weeks. I've noticed some days recently where the car's just significantly improved from previous days. A false forward collision warning is a forward collision warning that shouldn't have happened. So a lot of times it'll happen when a pedestrian's in the road on like the other side or or you're going around a turn and a car's parked on the shoulder. It's unfortunate. It's a bit of a boy cried wolf situation because it's training the driver that hearing a forward collision warning is a false alarm, which I think is really bad. False collision warnings should be reserved for imminent collisions. And so that's something that I'd really like to see Tesla work on and improve because it does have safety implications uh, for the future. So one thing I know Tesla for sure is working on is reading more signs in the world. For example, if there's a, if you're going around a turn and there's a 20 mile per hour sign that says don't go faster than 20 miles per hour around this turn, it'd be nice if the car read that and actually adhered to it. Uh, there's obviously a reason it's there and you can go faster, but it's often not recommended and a pretty poor experience for the user. Another one that frequently happens is yield signs. It doesn't really make sense when the car decides to stop for a yield versus proceeding through, and oftentimes it'll actually stop at a yield without need. So it'll, it would be really nice for Tesla to fix this one. And I think this is part of what's coming in 10.13, but also going to be slowly improved through the builds over time. With one of the recent releases for certain vehicles, Tesla announced that they're doing some kind of crowdsourcing of data from the fleet uh, to better understand road conditions as well as potentially potholes. They didn't call that out specifically, but it had to do with road conditions and it had to do with the uh, mostly the Model S and X that have uh, adaptive suspension. And this is something that will probably come after 10.13, but I'm really looking forward to it. Pothole avoidance would be really nice. There's tons of potholes around where I drive. And so not having to worry too much about them and disengage when we're gonna hit a big one would be really nice. And so I'm, I'm super excited for this for the future. And my last one isn't exactly an FSD improvement that I wanna see, although it, it will be improved by FSD in the future. And this is the FSD stack V11, both FSD and autopilot under the same hood running the same code, um, so essentially FSD on the freeway. I don't think this is gonna be a 10.13 spot release. It's possible it comes towards the end of the summer. Elon had mentioned that, but it's far more likely to come in the fall or winter, maybe not even 2022. Time will tell with that. Uh, but this should hopefully alleviate some of the more nuanced issues that I have with Navigate on Autopilot. And those include three general things, um, speed based lane changes, access to acceleration, as well as just better lane change logic. So with speed based lane changes, after the car initiates the lane change and turns on the turn signal, it usually takes three to five seconds before it actually changes lanes. And this is pretty unhelpful and, and often unsafe. You have traffic coming fast on both the left and the right hand side and so if you're taking a super long time to to turn after turning on your turn signal people aren't going to think you're actually turning and they're just going to proceed so it's it's definitely something that tesla needs to improve and i think fsd will help with that because you see in in normal fsd drives the car is able to turn on its turn signal and immediately get over so i'm hoping that will also be the case with with freeway driving that would be a super welcome feature in my opinion the second piece is is around access to acceleration so fsd can accelerate really quickly i think it probably has pretty close access to like the full like if you slammed on the accelerator it, it can accelerate quite that quickly but it, it can it can do a lot more than autopilot on the freeway and so one of the scenarios i'm thinking of is, is again around speed based lane changes if you're in you know the lane to the right of the furthest left lane and you're trying to get over and pass a car and and they've slowed down to like 65 miles an hour and the lane to your left is doing 75 or 80 
you need to quickly, if you want to get over to that left lane, you have to accelerate quickly up to 75 or 80, which the car is, is more than capable of doing. But autopilot at the moment, you know, it'll take several seconds or more to get from 65 to 75, which is way too slow for keeping up with traffic. So again, it's a little bit unsafe. It's, it's hard to use. And so I've personally turned off speed based lane changes and just initiate everything with my turn signals myself. Uh, but I still have navigate aut on autopilot on so that it'll get over to the right and take exits and everything. This is one of the biggest pieces that I have an issue with in navigate on autopilot. It's it's this and speed based lane changes. If they improve those two things, autopilot will be incredible and we'll just be able to go from point A to point B. No human interaction whatsoever. I'm, I'm super excited for it and hopefully FSD fixes all those issues. And the last piece about highway driving and, and autopilot is just having better lane change logic. Um, so it's again related to acceleration, related to speed based lane changes and exiting the passing lane. They're often done at the wrong time or in inconvenient times. Um, they either happen too often uh, when there's a car coming up behind quickly and you want to change lanes on either side either left or right and maybe it's just my personal preference something that i'm looking for but i i really only like changing lanes when there aren't cars coming up behind me it feels safer to me and and it doesn't annoy people if i like cut them off like i basically just don't want to cut them off and so this issue coupled with the lack of acceleration definitely makes speed based lane changes and navigate on autopilot more stressful than they need to be and a less useful feature than I think it really could be. So again, super excited to hopefully see improvements to this with, with FSD in the future. Whether or not that comes in the next six months will remain to be seen, but it's definitely something they're working on and, and, and will have a huge, huge impact on the viability of FSD in general. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. 10.13 is gonna be super exciting to see whenever that comes out, hopefully in the next month or two. And future updates will also be super cool to see. There's so much Tesla can do, so many things that they're working on. And I just, I really can't wait for 10.13 and beyond, and then all the way to, to version 11. So we'll see when that happens. Anyway, again, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.